Welcome everyone. Today I wanted to talk about a different topic. So a couple days ago there was an article that was released that said that Charles Hoskinson and Hyperledger, he was a big fan of Hyperledger, mainly the two protocols Hyperledger Fabric and Hyperledger Sawtooth. I'm going to go into the exact details or I'm going to try to go into some details of exactly what this entails and perhaps highlight a possible use case. People are constantly in the comments asking for potential use cases for smart contracts and institutions building platforms on top of Cardano. And I want to use a personal anecdote that happened to me recently that will help you visualize or try to visualize exactly what's going on in this feed. So first of all, we're going to talk about Hyperledger. So Hyperledger was started by the Linux Foundation, I believe, in 2015. And it's an open source kind of blockchain application where people can build open source blockchain projects. And it's very important because Cardano is open source. So Charles is a fan of the open source community and allowing developers, whether that's from the institutional side or from the everyday retail customer side, building applications on top of the platform. So Hyperledger Sawtooth and Hyperledger Fabric, there's, they're what you know, they're what you call DLTs or distributed ledger technologies. And why these are important moving on into the future is because when you're working with institutions on a global scale that are public companies that are worried about their profit for the next quarter, increasing their profit margins from X amount to X plus one cent amount every single quarter, they need to know uh, saving money on um, centralized systems. You know, it's not only about privacy for these companies, it's also about cost savings. Distributing the ledger across multiple computers allows them to save server costs and allows the transactions themselves to be more immutable, more secure, and more scalable. So last year, I believe in one of Charles Hoskinson's talks, he was speaking about airline miles and about how there's this entire reward system that is not monetized. And these, these companies actually would like to monetize these rewards or make it interoperable with currency. So you always see like you go on an airlines and you have like, um, I don't know, 10,000 American Airlines points and it's expiring this date. You know, they're sending you, oh, you know, buy these magazines with the, your, your points. You can't afford a flight, but you know, these points are just kind of like an escrow and they're being stored on some centralized server that American Airlines is running. But this is like a customer acquisition, customer loyalty kind of program. In actuality, they're probably losing money by just storing all these excess points that are not being used. And you know, they're trying to reward their customers in the best possible way. So something that I see in the future, I spoke with a friend of mine who works with a very reputable company. Everyone knows this company. I'm not going to say the name, but um, this company is is going is focusing on bringing some solutions through Hyperledger. And it's very interesting because this whole notion of tokenizing rewards is something that, you know, I think could play a huge role in the future. Whether that's your movie points, your gas points, your 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 shopping points from your grocery store, your mall points, all of these are being stored on a central server. Rather than, you know, these companies offsetting the cost to DLTs or distributed ledger technologies and increasing their bottom line. You know, it's this whole idea of, there, you know, you have a plane and you want to save fuel costs at the end of the year, so they remove one olive from from the plane, they remove olives or one olive from the plane and it saved like $50,000 in gas or a couple hundred thousand dollars in gas over a year period. Just cutting, shaving down every single place where they're wasting money and making it as most, most profitable as possible. Because when you're a Fortune 500 company and you are a public company, you have to report your quarterly reports and you have to make sure that whatever you're doing, you're doing it ethically and you're doing it scalably and you're doing it in a secure fashion. So I think that in the future, Charles Hoskinson expressing that, you know, they are interested in perhaps collaborating with Hyperledger in the future. Um, I, I read an article that said that maybe an enterprise version of Ouroboros, this could be um, very powerful because these companies could be building their own little private blockchains within the enclave of the Cardano ecosystem and really growing the future. So let me know what you think about this. Do you think that this is a good use case, this whole idea of 
tokenizing rewards and making them interoperable with everyday crypto everyday cryptocurrencies and fiat currencies. Let me know what you think. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And until the next video, thank you.